I was watching a documentary the other day. I don't know if you've seen it. You can go on YouTube and see this. And I showed it to my students when we were studying about suffering in this world. Suffering from a scientific point of view and from a religious point of view. And subhanAllah, watch this young man, probably about 30 years old. When he was 18 years, he had a car accident. And he lost feeling in all of his body from the neck down to his toes. All he could do was blink, breathe from his mouth and nose and speak and hear and see. You know, that's all really a human being needs, right? Allah says in the Quran that he made for us sama, hearing, wa basar, and sight. And he also created for us aql, a mind, and a heart, a qalb, which is in here. This is what all you need really for everything. However, this young man, he, is, he was paralyzed from neck to his toes. The interviewer asks him in Arabic, we want to ask you a golden question. What is it that you miss the most? I mean, after being paralyzed, what is it that you wish you can go back have your body back, have your senses back, and you wish deeply that you can turn back time and have that opportunity to do. He says of the past, he says there are three things which I miss the most. What do you think they are? To be able to walk again and feel the earth, or to be able to lift food to his mouth or to be able to work and gather a lot of money and wealth what do you think he wants to be able to come back to be good looking and get the girls attention what does he want brothers and sisters I'm not talking about a alim I am not talking about a scholar here I am talking about a very simple man who was once a youth like the rest of the youth and I don't think this has happened to him because of punishment. Because a person who is patient, then this is a reward action. I'll explain it inshallah very soon. What is it that you miss? That if you can turn back time, he said, I miss three things. And subhanAllah, this is from his instinct. Doesn't need to think about them. He says, as for the first thing I miss, he said, I miss having my body back because for about 18 years of my life, I haven't been able to place my head on the ground in sujood. I wish that I can make one more sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where does, where does this thought come to this person from? I wish that I can make one more sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I realize how much ni'mah Allah has given us. He said, I say this, but the people around me don't notice this. He said, people don't think like this. Because when you're drowning in distractions, you forget all the ni'mah that is around you. He said, as for the second thing, he said, I miss lifting my arms up. He said, I used to lift my arms up. He said, when I was okay, I, didn't, I forgot to lift my arms up often when I made dua. I wish that I can go back just to repay that time and lift my arms up. And when I was healthy enough, I didn't lift the Quran enough. I wish that I can have my arms to lift the Quran up so I can read it. And I wish that I can lift my arms up to Allah in the form of the dua which the Prophet ﷺ taught us just to come near to my Lord again. He said, as for the third thing which I miss, he said, whenever Eid comes, I used to hug my mother. And when Eid comes now, I miss that my mother hugs me and I cannot hug her back. So my mother, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the parents are the source of mercy. I wish that I can hug my mother as she hugs me. They asked him another question and there were young people around him. Brothers and sisters, this is not the only man I'm talking about. This just happens to be one of millions. But this is a person whose heart was guided whose heart was gifted with the hidayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I'll talk about that in a minute, why this is a gift. He was asked, how do you feel right now? He said, I have learned lessons that no one on the face of the earth can learn. He said, let me ask you all a question. If one of you had the feeling of wanting to go to the toilet, excuse me for saying that, but wallahi, even in there is a ni'mah, a blessing. If one of you needs to go to the toilet to do number two, and you find yourself suddenly, your bowels are not moving. You can't go. He said, what do you do? He said, wait a day. Okay, maybe it's next second day you can go. He said, okay, the second day comes. You still can't go. And you're eating. And it's filling up inside. And you can feel the pain. Third day comes. You still can't go. One week. And you still can't go. Two weeks. What do you do? What do you do? He said, get some laxatives. Okay, you got some laxatives. You took the pills. But still, doesn't work. Three weeks passed. You still can't go. And brothers and sisters, I'll tell you from a biomedical background, that if this goes for too long, this goes for too long, your intestines will rupture. And if they rupture, it's toxic. You will die in a matter of three or four hours. Just because of that. Because you couldn't go to the toilet. He said, three weeks passed. What do you do? You go to the hospital. He says, okay, we go to the hospital. And in the hospital, they can't do anything. What do you do? And they're sitting there thinking, what do you do? He said, as for me, for 18 years of my life, this is how I live my life. I cannot go. He said, so I wonder, you're probably wondering, what do I do then? How do I get rid of this feces? How do I get rid of this pain? How do I get rid of this unwanted thing in my body? He says, you know what happens? He says, I have a mother, which Allah has gifted to me and she is with me. She goes through what I have been going through. He says, she brings her hand and she takes it out for me with her hands. He says, all my life, this is how I've been living. My mother takes it out. He says, Alhamdulillah, for the blessing which Allah has given you.